Hello, welcome to Pike Creek Farm. My name is Renee, and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping in. I'm really happy to have everyone here. And today what I'm doing is reviewing my week for the Pantry Challenge, the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. And it's the fourth week, fourth week. And it's gone really well. This week we had more leftovers and uh, nights that we weren't as hungry, so it was not as many meals, but I did make some pretty good things, and my breakfasts were a lot of the same, but you'll see. I'm going to show you. I got this cup this week, local potter, and I'm not usually a pink person, but I loved the color of this. I, this, this glaze I just loved, so that was my treat this week. I've not been spending money at all on groceries, and there was a little bit extra in the budget that I could still put money in savings and get myself this, so treat. <laughs> I also got, let me show you, tea light holder. I love the glaze, and it, it's like Starry Night, Van Gogh. <laughs> so, and it was nice to help someone local too, a local artist. That was fun. So anyway, I got my oolong tea here and let's review this past week, the Three Rivers Challenge. I started off the week with 40 pounds of chicken breast. So I was trying to get it processed. I did take couple pounds and I made a casserole to pass at church potluck. It had stuffing and cream of chicken soup and cheese and the chicken and I never took a picture of it and I was so full from that still that evening I did not make anything. I just canned my chicken and worked on that 40 pounds so the potluck was wonderful and it's always fun to taste what everyone else brings because it's different than what I make at home and with the pantry challenge, it was nice to have the variety. But it was some good food there. But then I took my leftover spaghetti squash and I made spaghetti squash fritters for breakfast. They have lemon juice and they have Parmesan cheese and I bake them in the oven and I just love them. And they are really good and something different for breakfast. And I had them for several days then. So it made it for nice at work to have the variety and have the leftover and I would serve it with some Greek yogurt and I'm getting a good picture of my counter there but I like it with some Greek yogurt. Here I am doing a spice blend to go on the whole chicken that I took out with off for Sunday dinner I thought but it ended up being Tuesday's dinner and I was going to make a beer can chicken and I do my own spice blend for it, and it is really good, and my family has always liked it, and it's savory and a little bit sweet, and I mix it all up with all the spices I have on hand, and then it goes on this big chicken. It was a seven pound chicken. And the background is the pan I use for my beer can chicken. Um, the chicken goes on the cone in the middle, and there's vents for the steam to come out and you put some of the beer or whatever liquid. I used some ginger beer, non-alcoholic beer, and it was very good. And what I'm doing now is getting the spice rub to go inside the chicken. And then I will coat the entire outside of the chicken also. And it bakes for a couple hours in the oven. So now I get to put it on the cone. <laughs> it's always... A challenge. There it goes. And sometimes I will even put potatoes around the outside. I don't put as much seasoning on it. And here I am testing to see what the temperature is and see how it gets all nice, crispy, and cr crunchy and flavorful on the outside. And it is the most tender white meat ever. And there's all the dripping, so it's not sitting in that. So it's something that we really enjoy doing with a whole chicken is baking it in the oven as beer can chicken. And you can vary up the spice blend to whatever flavors your family likes. So 
I'm just waiting for it to rest some, and then I will take it off and put it on a plate to slice. And I am going. So it was a real simple meal, actually. And, and there's the plate. And now I get to take it off and start slicing it. And you can see the juice that's coming out of the breast. It is not dry at all. And here's the next day at work. My breakfast was two of those spaghetti squash fritters with some Greek yogurt. And then I had a salad for lunch and I put some of the chicken on it. And we had had um, Subway at work the day before for a birthday party. So there was leftover veggies. So I was pretty happy. And that night, I'm here I am cooking spaghetti. I am going to make chicken spaghetti for dinner with some of the rotisserie chicken. It's an old recipe from a cookbook from back in the 80s. And it's very simple, and it warms up great, too. And it uses just simple pantry items, basically. So here's the spaghetti. I did add a little bit of Parmesan cheese and some garlic to that. And then here's the first layer with the soup, the chicken, and the cheese. And then you do it again, and here it is out of the oven. It's all ooey-gooey and browned and yummy. And then the next day, I decided to um, make bagels. And I make two-ingredient bagels with um, Greek yogurt and flour and leavening. And so here it is. I'm getting ready just to knead it. I do have a video on how I make these. They are a family favorite. Um, Jim's son loves them. And I use the everything but the bagel seasoning on it but i have done it with fresh garlic in them and garlic on top i've done it with poppy seeds if i don't have that seasoning the everything but the bagel i use whatever i have and they always go over and it feels good to punch a dough doesn't it i just love kneading dough and getting out my frustrations <laughs> but this will make four bagels and so then we each had one and i will put to in the freezer for this coming week and they let them thaw and warm them up uh, in the toaster I usually slice them in half and put them in the toaster and they are great sometimes I'll put like a laughing cow cheese on them sometimes I will make an egg sandwich out of them and right now it's like play-doh when you make them that's what it always reminds me of is how I used to use play-doh as a little girl but they're real simple to make and really cheap compared to buying them. And I think they taste really good. Here I am putting an egg wash on to get the topping to stick. And I'm pretty liberal when I shake on the seasoning because some of it does fall off. So I want to try and get as much flavor on the top as I can. And it smells great when they're baking the garlic and the onion. And here's the sandwich I made. I put one egg on it and there was some laughing cow cheese underneath it. And I was working from home, so sitting at my desk, my dining room table actually. And for dinner that night, Friday, I made a sheet pan meal. I used some turkey sausage and shrimp and onion and broccoli and red pepper. And I seasoned it with a bunch of variety of seasons, garlic and salt, um, some different seasonings that I'd gotten from a local vendor and just did it real simple and added some, some olive oil and put it in the oven like at 400 and let it go. I had partially cooked all this and I was just adding the shrimp at this point because they were already pre-cooked and I didn't want them to get overdone. So here I was just adding the shrimp to the already almost cooked other ingredients, so. And here is the finished meal that I served with rice. And it was really good and tasty and fast and a nice Friday night. Saturday morning, I needed to make bread, so I made a cinnamon swirl loaf and also one plain. There's my pear preserves on top of that. I just love my pear preserves with some bacon and eggs. So it was a really nice Saturday. We had it as brunch. And then that night I made chicken salad out of my home canned chicken to go on some homemade bread. And it was a real simple dinner. We had 
sandwiches and homemade dill pickles. So can't get much easier than that. I knew we wouldn't eat it all that night, so I put it into a Gladware container and we'll have it for sandwiches this week for lunch. Jim will have it there when I'm gone to work. He likes to have something that he can just grab. I decided to add some celery to it because I still have some celery in my crisper. So I added some celery. I also added some pickle relish that I made. And oh, I love that stuff. It's so good. So I added that and then some seasonings. I added onion powder and salt and pepper. And it was a real simple dinner. And here is the plate with the bread, the pickles. There's the chicken salad, and that was my dinner Saturday night. And it was actually perfect. It was more than enough. The thing I, I think I learned from this week is that I can have simple things like a chicken salad sandwich like last night. It was really good, and it was easy and stress-free. So, And it was my fast food. It was faster than getting a pizza delivered. So that's what I've, I've learned, that it doesn't have to all be big meals that I'm doing on this pantry challenge. It's just we need to be fed and we need food. And let's use the food we have. So I want to thank everyone for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, push the like button. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to continue this into February. Let me know down below if you want me to keep doing these weekly updates on my menus and our and what we're doing here for dinners and breakfast and lunch. Just, just let me know so I remember to bring my camera out for all the meals. <laughs> but I really love hearing from everyone. It's been a lot of fun to hear the comments back and like I posted the chicken salad recipe and how you make your chicken salad. It's just really cool. So thank you, everyone. Have a happy Sunday, and I'll see you next week at Pike Creek Farm.